are too many uh, YouTubers out here interviewing rappers and athletes and entertainers, and it has its place. I mean, entertainment, it has its place. But to me, doctors like you, Lolo, entrepreneurs and uh, mechanical engineers, engineers, uh, people who start businesses, those are the ones who are going to take um, our country and our community to the next level. So with that, man, how do you feel? How, how's everything? How are you? How's going on, bro? Everything is good, <laughs> man. I'm ready to get it started, bro. Sure cool. you got some good questions lined up for your boy. Good, yeah. I've had a couple of people reach out to me about some stuff, so this is yeah. going to be a good one. It's kind of funny, man. The first time I met you, dog, dog we were I was in, I was hooping in like a city league in Miami. So I see yeah. this tall black, I see this tall brother walking the court. He's like, hey man, what's up? My name is uh my name is Pat. Everybody calls me Lolo. I was like, what's up, bro? My name is Chris. Everybody calls me Chris. So I asked, <laughs> what do you do? And I was like, eh, I work on air conditioners. I was like, what do you do, Lolo? Eh. Eh, I don't know. I work in a hospital, N nothing serious. I was like, all right, cool. facts. <laughs> That's facts, exactly. <laughs> and what was wild was everybody, and you know this, bro, everybody in Miami, the first thing they start with, um, is what they do for a living. They want you to be all impressed about how much money they make. And I thought it was pretty dope with you, man, because literally like right after that game, we all went out and had some drinks and stuff. And I was like, all right, so what do you really do, Lolo? He said, I'm a dentist. <laughs> all right, what do you really do? I was like, I'm a mechanical engineer. He's like, yeah, I knew you saying you work on air conditioning. It was, it was more to it than that. <laughs> and that's and, and that's been something that's been pretty dope, man, because like I said, most of the people who I talk to uh, in Miami is literally what they start with is how much money they make, what kind of car they drive, where they live, how many what girls they're talking to, what yeah. they do for a living. And you didn't do that, bro. And, and that, that was always kind of something I thought about. So, yeah, that's that's funny you say that, bro, because it's like when I, when I did meet you, because I remember the gym, there was not too many black people in there at, at that particular session. Uh, and then I saw, I was like, there's a black dude over there. I was like, I might as well just go over there and try to hoop with him. Was, you know, we just gravitate towards each other in that setting. And then as soon as I started talking to you, I was like, yeah, I definitely know this dude is smart. Like, I don't know what he do for a living. He could be a garbage man, but he's smart. And I don't know, that's something about me. I like to be around, you know, people that are got their heads in the right places. Because I'm a true believer who you keep around you, that's just the route you're going to end up walking. Like, especially your brothers, it's like if you have like key people around you that are educated, you normally get in this like competitive but friendly competitive nature, which end up pushing everybody to be better. So I've always gravitated towards that. But yeah, but when you said that and you didn't tell me what you were, I was like, all right, he's a good guy. That's what I got from there. And then I, when you asked me, I was like, damn, like, like I don't want to tell him what I do. <laughs> like, it's, I, I'm like, damn, I don't want to make it seem like I'm boasted or whatever. Like I want to just him to take me for who I am and just we just hoop and keep it going. So that's kind of what came in my head at that moment. But no, naturally and normally, yeah, I don't like to tell people what I do, man, because they automatically just see money and they get past of trying to build like a bond with you as like a regular person on their level. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of funny. Depending on the circles I'm in, sometimes I'll, I'll tell people I'm a mechanical engineer. Other times I won't. But you're right. I, I agree with you because unlike a hey, engineers, we make good money. I make a I make a phenomenal salary. People always kind of underestimate what engineers make. But if you're a doctor, and I've been in, I've been in, I hung out with a lot of doctors. If you're a doctor, immediately tell somebody I'm a doctor. They yeah. immediately start asking you guys for money, or they want to ask you like for a hookup or something. And it's, just, it's particularly if you're a, if you're a black doctor. And as an engineer, I don't have to deal with that as much. But yeah, you are right. People do put you in an entirely different. Um, different. Yeah, you can't even be normal no more. No, nah, you can't. They expect and you to always. They they want something from you. And or like wherever, whenever you go places, you gotta be, you gotta take care of the tab or whatever it is. But they don't understand what we have, and which I'm sure we'll get into that talk. All the responsibilities that we have, but they just want to take. So yep. it's like when I when I get into new crowds, I like to just kind of come in and like yo, just put, make me as as equal as y'all. But at the same time, you gotta know who to hang around you know what yeah. i mean you can hang around everybody <laughs> uh, you, you're right you're right at the end of the day me and you got stuff to lose it's just that, that's just the way that it is and a lot more so than some of the other people we can kick it with so yeah yep facts facts without no doubt all right lolo first and foremost man introduce you to my audience who who are you bro who are you all right so my name is dr patrick sebastian lolo uh, i'm originally from port au prince haiti you know where my zoe's at <laughs> um i was born I was born in Haiti, actually. I moved to Miami when I was about 10 years old. Uh, I'm one out of four kids. I have three older sisters. I'm the baby. I'm the only boy in the family. Uh, grew up without a father. Um, although my father was alive, but we just, we, we didn't really get along. And then we kind of got along later on in life, but um, that relationship then faded. But anyways, I uh, moved here to Miami when I was about 10, 11, did uh, middle school here, high school. 
And then I ended up going to Florida Inter International for uh, for my undergrad. I did a, a, a major in biology over there um, with a minors in chemistry. And then and uh, while I was in uh, undergrad, that's when I realized I wanted to become a dentist. And we can get into that later. I did my schooling for dentistry at University of Florida. Go Gators. You already know. <laughs> and then I moved back to Miami. Uh, to do my pediatric residency um, at Nicholas Children. It's formerly known as Miami Children Hospital. And then after my residency, stayed in Miami pretty much. And now I'm currently working in Miami. Got you, got you. All right, let's, uh, dope, dope. Um, wow, a lot of things I would like to ask you about that. But let's, for now, let's stick with all medical uh, tracking and everything. Um, what made you want to be a dentist, Lolo? So what really made me want to become a dentist, growing up, I really had no idea what I wanted to do. So for anyone listening, if you don't know what you want to do, it's cool. But I've always had like a, a, a this thing about me that just, I don't know, I'm very religious. I trust God. You know, I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. But yeah. I've always felt like there's been a voice in my head that always kind of guides me to where I needed to be by just <clears throat> just being true to to what I feel like I'm in tune with, but I never knew what I wanted to do. But my family's Haitian and you know how Haitian people are or even Caribbean people. It's like, you gotta be a doctor, a nurse or an engineer. Like yep. those are the three things that you could be that, yep. that, that'll be successful in their eyes. So that's yep. always been in my head. No, nah, it's facts. <laughs> it's yep. like a thing. Um, so that was always in my head. But then when I came here from Haiti to America, like I had a lot of dental issues because there's no real dental care in Haiti. Like if you want to go to the dentist in Haiti, you got to have money. You know what I mean? So it's like a like a rich people thing, kind of uh, to uh, lack of better words. So when I came here, I had a lot of issues wrong with my teeth. So I was always at the dentist. So I went through high school, through undergrad, like having a lot of issues that I had to deal with. I was diagnosed with uh, this condition called aggressive periodontitis. It's a rare form of gum disease. And it was, I, I found out I had it when I was about 13 or 14, which is treatable and maintainable. Um, so I had to go through all these treatments from about 13 all the way up until like, like I graduated college. So, so I constantly was at the dentist. So my dentist was a really cool guy. At this point, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. But when I got into college, and this goes back to putting the right people around you, I, I met, uh, I had like a little crew of buddies and all of us, we were cool dudes just like you and I. But we all like was like, bro, we we need to be successful. I'm thinking I want to become a doctor. I'm thinking I want to be a pharmacist. Like we all were had these ideas of either doctor, engineer, architect. So we started taking classes that would give us, you know, from a good major perspective. We were, we were taking our calculus classes, our science classes, um, so just to make sure like whatever we wanted to do, we took all the hard classes. So, and we did it as a group, bro. It was like maybe a group of four or five of us. And then after that, like, I want to say maybe my junior year of college, I, um, one of my buddies and I was like, yo, I think I want to become a dentist. And I was like, you know what, maybe I do too. And then we were like, just randomly talking. And I was like, damn, all this stuff I went through with, you know, with my dental condition and I was shadow, I was always at the dentist chilling with this guy. I was like, maybe this is something I should like look into. You know what I mean? So I had a talk with my mom. And my mom told me like my dad had always wanted to become a dentist when he was younger but since he lived in haiti there was no opportunities so boom right there bro that was like my confirmation i was like yeah that's definitely god like aligning me with this so i just followed through with it bro i started studying i took my tests my dats i got into um uh, i pretty much applied to 10 schools and then i got into seven out of the 10 that i applied to so that's pretty much what sparked my interest into dentistry Pediatric is a whole different, a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's uh, let's stick with that then. Um, sure. uh, this, uh, this, what is the educational path that it takes to becoming a dentist? Uh, obviously, I'm a I'm a mechanical engineer, so I do have some idea about what you guys have to do in regards to like undergrad, grad, residency, and all that kind of stuff. But for my listeners, um, basically, explain to them in sequential order when you say, "Okay, I want to be a dentist." What does that path look like, Lolo? Okay, so obviously, you have to graduate high school. Um, and once you graduate high school, you gotta go to, you don't need to go to a four year university right off back. You can do like a two years associates and then transfer to a, a four year university to finish your bachelor's. You would preferably need to get a bachelor's either in biology, chemistry, biochemistry, or you know something within the science or 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 heavy on the science. You don't need to major in these, but it would if you major in one of these um, 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 
um, subjects, you would already have taken all the prerequisite classes for both, um, for all three, medical, dental, and pharmacy. Um, there's been other students that, you know, chose the route of majoring, let's say, in physics or, or, or you know, maybe like they want to become a singer or whatever it is they want to do. And they major in those, but what ends up happening, you got to still take all these other classes. So instead of finishing your school in four years, your undergrad, you might finish in five or six years because you took all these other classes and these other domains that wasn't really related to um, to the medical. Right. So yeah, so high school, four year degree, but you could do a two years and two years, do a bachelor's in any pre-health, biology, chemistry, whatever. Then you have to take an exam, it's called a dental admission test. Um, it's like a kind of like an SATs, but like for the dental. Um, and then you got to score decently well in there. And if it, you don't score really well, then you got to show other areas of strength. And then once you take that test, you apply to a dental program or medical program, whatever it is that you want to do. And you uh, get admitted to whichever, then you do another four years of school. So four years of undergrad, four years of dental school. And then after your four years of dental school, you can choose to specialize into a subspecialty of dentistry or you can just become a general dentist you know and a general dentist is like a family dentist they do a little bit of everything but they don't specifically specialize on one thing um i chose to do a two extra years of residency to specialize in pediatrics so you have four years of college four years of dental school you become a dentist and then if you want to specialize it's either two to anywhere from two to four extra years of, of school when you specialized as a pediatric, was that another two years, another four? Yeah, mine was in that other two years. So it was four years of college, four years of dental school, then two years of residency to, to specialize in pediatrics. Got you, got you. Yeah, you're a believer. I'm a believer. You believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. And I, yeah, I, I don't yeah. think that things are a coincidence. Uh, I'm not surprised. You said your father wanted to be a, um, a dentist um, and he was not able to because he spent most of his life in Haiti. You, you uh, immigrated to America at 10 and um, now you're a dentist. I don't. I don't think that's a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think uh, as parents, we live vicariously through our children. So I think that you're living out you know, a dream your father had. So that's a beautiful thing, uh, Lolo. Yeah. It really is, man. Yeah, I appreciate but, that. <laughs> without no doubt. Let's back up a little bit. Uh, I'm a. I am a Black American, as far as I know. Uh, I have ancestors that are 100% Cherokee, Native American. But as far as I know, I am not Caribbean. I'm Black American. You are Haitian American, and I think we were talking a little bit earlier. Um, a lot of my ancestors, I do have some ancestors from Florida, as well as others from um, from uh, South Carolina, and they ended up immigrating, kind of moving up north because of Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. So uh, Perry, uh, one quick story I'll tell. Uh, Julius Uli Perry, he was a Black guy that was trying to get people registered to vote, I believe, in the 1920s. Um, and Paramore, basically or modern day Orlando, he got lynched by a group of white men and they ended up uh, and, um, a lot of blacks and a lot most entrepreneurial and industrial black Americans left Florida and going to like Georgia, New York City, Chicago, places like that. And in the civil rights movement in the 1960s, um, when they opened up, when that, when the civil rights movement happened, it opened up the floodgates essentially for like a lot of Haitian, Jamaican, Cuban and uh, immigrants to start coming to America. So you are a child of immigrants. So as a child of immigrants, I believe you came to America in the two, in 2000, in the 2000s or? Yeah, 2000, 2000, December 2000. All right, that's a blessing, that's a blessing. Uh, as an immigrant, what were, uh, I guess we first got to America, I was like, because my wife is an immigrant, I was like to ask, when you first got to the United States, what did you, like, I don't know, what, what were the three first things that was like, wow, just, okay, I'm in a different country. What, what, what were three things that just hit you? Like, this is different. Um, first, it was how clean it was. <laughs> I was like, yo, I've never, I mean, just to back up a little bit, I was a kid when I was coming here, so I was a little sad leaving 80 because all I could think was all oh, my friends, my boys, I'm leaving them because I didn't think how poor we were. I, that didn't really materialize in my head yet because yeah. that's not how our parents raised us. Um, but when I moved here, I immediately saw just how clean it was. And I just thought it was the most beautiful place I've ever seen, bro. And I remember we had like a little small one bedroom place and it didn't matter. We all just five of us sleeping in one bed and we were just all happy. So that was really like the first initial thought when I got here and then I was like you know like because you know my mom always told us like you come to America anything is possible and that was really the first feeling that came in my mind I'm like bro the world is mine now I can do anything I want <laughs> so those were my initial thought when I came here as a kid <laughs> got, you, got you got you I was interviewing one of my boys DJ he's actually Haitian American and he came here I think he was born here but his brothers are born in Haiti 
And he was saying that when he came to America, there were some negative experiences he had just in regards to being a Haitian immigrant and things of that nature. South Florida is a very diverse place. Yeah. So you run across a lot of like just ignorant um, experiences being a Haitian uh, immigrant or was it kind of more Yeah, of yeah I would definitely say so. Um, I feel like, and then that, that's where like we, and we talked a little bit about this before where we were educated to actually talk about our differences and, and still realize that we're black. But you know, as a kid, a lot of people don't know how to do that. You know what I mean? So yeah, I did get made fun a lot by like African-Americans that were, you know, black kids, but a lot of them were the kids that were from the hood. You know that they, their parents were probably, you know, their the lower income bracket, you know what I mean? And for them, it was more so like, they're cooler than us, you know, um, y'all got an accent. You know, we got some names, you know, Haitian booty scratcher, that's one of them. <laughs> like, so they did make fun of me at, at times. And then the, the funny part about it, bro, is that there was a lot of Haitians kids that were born here that didn't have accents that would try to fit in with the you know the black African Americans and, and not even claim that they were Haitian. Right. And that was happening. And not until after I graduated high school, bro, that I knew some of the kids that were making fun of me where some of them were even Haitian, not even black. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? They were trying to fit yeah. in with that crowd, and then just like half of them were Haitian, but half of them were black, and then they got along, but they were lying to them saying that they're not Haitian because they didn't have accent. And then they grouped up to kind of like, so, but like for me, bro, stuff like that really never got to me. I know other kids that did, they got into fights and all of that. But like, I've always been, when I moved here, bro, I was focused. I was like, I know I got a mission. I know all these kids that's acting cool right now. Later on, I don't know what they're going to be doing in their lives. I just know what I'm here to do, bro. I'm going to do it. But we did have that in South Florida, bro. And I, and I'm, and I can't lie, but now I would say it's, it, I don't know if it's still happening in these schools, but I definitely feel like Haitian people as a whole are more accepted in South Florida now as we were before. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely see that. Um, I, I can definitely see that. Um, just from the Haitian guys I've kind of hung out with, the Jamaican guys I hung out with, uh, Afro-Latino people I hung out with, I think it's a lot more accepting. Honestly, what I kind of was, the vibe I was getting from a lot of the people was they were kind of crapping on the Black Americans and the White Americans. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they went both they ways, bro. They, they, they went both, both ways, ways exactly. Both ways. So yeah. it, went, it went both ways. <laughs> yeah, but, but more importantly, like you said, once you get educated, you start realizing, wait a minute, these people got different food, they got different music, they got different, uh, they got different tastes, they got different cuisines, and it's all it's all cool and it's all fun. When you start yeah. exposing yourself to other cultures and you realize how cool it is to learn about other cultures, it to me anyway, it makes you a more well-rounded man. My wife is an immigrant, like I said earlier, and um, when her family first met me, they were shocked to find out I was not Caribbean. They were like, "How do you know so much about our culture?" I was like. Why would I want? Why would I not want to learn about a culture that's not mine? I mean, it yeah. makes the world so much bigger. So yeah, back, back. Nah, that's back, back, back. Back. yeah. All right, let's keep it moving. I'm gonna hit on some uh, things about education and everything, and whether or not you experience any uh, any uh, racism in that. But first and foremost, let's talk a little bit also more um, about your actual business practices because you are a, a medical doctor, you're a dentist. But one thing I found very dope about you, uh, Lolo, is that you actually own your own practice. Um, you own your own successful practice. So I guess uh, describe uh, your business to my audience and what made you want to be an entrepreneur versus spending the rest of your life working for someone else? Yeah, well, right now, like, so I, at first when I graduated, I was working at a, a hospital setting. Um, so I was, I had a roof and umbrella over me, obviously, but the main reason why I wanted to stay there was, you know, there was a loan repayment program that they were able to offer me. So I was like, I had to jump on that, try to get rid of this debt. And then I always knew I wanted to go to private practice, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. So I had like a unique opportunity um, that uh, my uh, a mentor of mine told me about of a of a of a, another dentist that he mentors, and and then that's how I got linked up with this guy, and we partnered up. So we're business partners in the sense of opening up that office. Um, so I do run a hundred percent all operations in that business, but I do have a partner as well. My goal is to eventually, I'll probably end up staying there or, or you do a multiple office type system. But I personally didn't want to feel like I wanted to take the 100% liabilities off rip right out of school in a sense, because I never really had a entrepreneurship or business mindset. So I chose that route. But the ultimate goal is I do run the whole office. I just have a partner, if that makes sense, just to clarify that. <laughs> but no. as far as like owning an own office, bro, um, I think it's great um it's it's very tiring because you got to deal with a lot of not just only the the dental aspect but also the the management aspect you know what i mean so you're you're not you're not just walking in being the doctor you got to be the doctor make up the treatment plan treat the patients but also there's internal issues that's going to be happening employees not coming in to work on time stuff that you may have to empower another person 
uh, like a manager, obviously, to do. But you have to learn how to be a, a leader in a sense. It's not just being a doctor. You got to know how to manage people, which been a learning curve of mine. But I think I'm pretty. Do I'm doing a pretty good job since you know uh, business is kind of going up right now since we took over. Um, but other than that, man, it's 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 grinding, man. It's one of those things that it's like you have a child and you gotta kind of raise it up to a certain extent. And however hard and work you put into it, that's what you're gonna get out of it. And there's no more like, yo, I don't want to work today or I don't want to, because anything you don't do for your practice, it's like you're not doing for your child, if that makes sense. Right. No, completely. But that's completely. the best way I could describe it. <laughs> no, no, completely. And, and that's something that I liked about rolling with guys like you and some of your friends, some of your boys, man, because if you are not, and I always tell people this, if you're an entrepreneur, we speak a different language. Like mm -hmm. hey, we, we walk different, we talk different, we have a different language. Financipation is my baby. This is one of my businesses. And literally, like you say, it literally does become a baby. Um, and when you own your own business, nothing feels cooler than watching that thing grow. <laughs> I mean, yeah. simple as that. I was telling my friends, he was just, I was just like, if you're an entrepreneur, it's almost like being quote unquote high for 50 years. If you own a, a business, 50. and what I mean by that is this, every day you're literally excited to work in this business. Yeah. Every day you're excited seeing a business grow. Every day, it, it, literally, there's no reason to ever even want to do drugs, essentially, if you're an entrepreneur, in my opinion, because the high that you get from doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, you get that from running your own business. That's yeah. how I was being an entrepreneur. It, it, it truly is the best thing in the world. Yeah. It truly is. Yep, I agree, man. It's, I feel like it's a thing that a lot of Black people are afraid to, to own their own stuff and do their own things because we kind of got in this mindset of just waking up, working, and going home. You get your share. And it's kind of been instilled in, like, the whole... Like, you know, going back to the whole racial, you know, being like en enslaved, you just all you could do is just work for somebody and go home. And it is hard to break out of that cycle and realizing, yo, the fact that you own, yeah, you're going to work harder, but the benefits are going to reap at the end. Now you're going to be able to rest, bro. That's why we working for the rest eventually, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not trying to just keep clocking in and clocking out for the rest of my life, bro. Nah. And I'm not crapping on um, my nine to fivers. I mean, um, there's some, I'll, I'll be completely real with you. I'm not crapping on that because there, there's a beauty in that as well. But I do tell everybody who works in corporate America, start a business. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care whether you're doing it. I call it the five to nine, start a five to nine business. You get off work at 4.30, you get home at five o'clock, uh, chill in it, chill for about an hour, then from six to 10 p.m., work on your business. Yeah. Do that no. because it, it works you out of corporate America, essentially. Yeah, for sure, man. You, there's there's no way you could talk bad about a nine to five because we had to be a nine to five in order to get to where you want to get. So let's not really skip that part. A lot of time people try to skip to get to greatness. You got to be that servant to be then be served eventually, you, if that makes any sense. So so bottom line is you got to go through that grind. But I, like you said, I, I just even if it's not owning your own business of work, there's something that you could go into certain sort of ownership if it's like starting a random side business or anything else to then empower your family line and, and the long haul and not living in that mindset of just yo we wake up to just work for something and then that's it and there's nothing we're gonna leave behind if that makes sense you know what i mean you, i'm sure you know more about finance than i do but that's just also the caribbean mindset of like having ownership over something as exactly. opposed to day to day and something could just be taken away from you. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. And uh, before I go to the next question, something else I'll say too, a, a good thing about corporate America, you have things like your 401k match. Um, mm -hmm. Some companies do profit sharing. Uh, I know I've gotten a lot of good advice from some of the older white, some of the older black, and some of the older Hispanic men I work with as far as uh, how to be a father, how to be a better Christian, how to be yeah. a better entrepreneur. But these are guys I work with. So there are a lot of benefits to working in corporate America. I'm not dumping anybody who works in the that, that that's honestly where you should learn and make your mistakes. But uh, everybody, start a business. Um, it's not it's easier to start a business than it is to apply for a job. Believe me when I say that. So yeah, that's right. Yep. All right, keep it moving, Malolo. Uh, what sure. is a typical day like for you as an entrepreneur and as an owner of a and essentially as a as a I'm gonna say owner of a dental practice? Yes. So my typical day, uh, I usually wake up around. 5.45, I try to put my alarm, but usually I was probably get out of bed around six. I try to get all my workouts done in the morning because like, you know, I, you got to stay in shape because your body's your temple. If you, your body's not working, your mind's not going to be sharp and you're not going to be able to be your greatest self. I have this new motto that I've always kind of instilled, like do something hard when you wake up and your days is going to get chill. A lot of time you, people just want to like ha be chilling all the time. You got to grind to chill. I don't know, but that's just my mindset. So. So I wake up, I try to get in my workout. I usually like doing cardio. 
do a couple of miles and then I had to take a shower. Then I had to work, usually get to the office around like 8.30 to 8.45. We start seeing patients around 8.30. Um, sometimes I get in a little early if we're having like a morning huddle that day. Um, other times I'll get in right, you know, five minutes after they start seeing the patients because I don't really need to be there as early um, if my team is operating properly. You know what I mean? Because they got to sit the patient down, do all their stuff, and then I come in there and, and I, I, I do my checkups. Um, and pretty much I work 8.30 to about 5 o'clock. Uh, I see about, I would say, 30 to 40 patients a day, uh, children. Uh, ranges from one to about 21. Usually see about 20 to 25 in the morning and another 20 in the afternoon. Have about a one hour lunch break in between. Usually get done with my work around five-ish. Then I drive home. Usually on my way home, I have my little couple of spots that I like to stop to grab food, maybe grab a, a glass of wine. to so just kind of decompress because my days are really, really not only mentally draining, but physically draining. Um, so that's why the physical aspect was like, you know, I try to make sure I stay in shape by working out, but like, you know, like I need my like one hour or two hours of decompression after work. Cause you know, you know, I'm at work all day, bro. It's kind of like the best way I describe people with being a pediatric dentist is, is imagine you dress up as a mascot and you start dancing at your kids' birthday parties, bro. And then you got to do it from nine to five. Like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you got to be in costume and in character. Cause if I treat one kid nicely and I don't treat the other one nicely and the parents might see they might think oh this guy is, you know what I mean so I gotta be mentally and physically like in tune with like my character and what I'm doing and then I so after work I need my one or two hours of decompression have dinner maybe a glass of wine and then pretty much I'm home by like I'd say 7 30 8 o'clock uh take a shower watch a little show or something and I go to bed bro and it's like gonna repeat like Monday through Friday and I know it sounds boring but like at work, it's like very draining because it's like I'm the doctor and, and you know, sure I'm writing notes, all the codes that the procedures that I've done are being inputted properly into the computer. So there's also a, 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 a desk job as well that I need to be doing because if like my manager or my front desk receptionist are not inputting a code that I did, it might, it's not hurting their pocket, it's hurting my pocket because I did the work and they didn't and put a certain code but they're gonna still get their salary, but the money that I'm getting is gonna go low because they get their paycheck no matter what. I might not get paid a certain month if we don't make a certain amount of money. So that's another aspect of being your own business owner that a lot of people don't get, you know what I mean? If you wanna be a good business owner, like you wanna take care of your people and then you take care of yourself. Um, but you also wanna empower them, right? So I do a lot of like, you know, I do TikToks and stuff like that. I'm sure you see it at work. Awesome, awesome, yeah. um, I keep involved, like I try to, I don't like to be that boss that people are afraid of, but I also, cause I like, I'm a friendly guy, you know, but also like I get to, I don't want to be that one that's hanging out with them outside of work and doing stuff with that. So I don't do that much. Like maybe for like a, a dinner or a team building activity, we might all hang out together. But right. other than I try to keep that, you know, that line, but at work, I try to keep it very friendly. We're doing TikToks, we're chatting around, we're telling jokes at work. It's a very, very fun environment where I'm working, but I'm also the one that's in charge of everything. You know what I mean? If an emergency child, God forbid, knock on wood, is choking or whatever, or any parent that comes in, I have to handle that and I have to do my procedures and I have to make sure the proper codes, the notes are being written properly because if a parent decides to sue over a procedure, I have to make sure there's proper documents. So it's all of those levels that I'm dealing with on a daily basis. But as soon as I get off and I clock out, I'm like, check yeah. out. It's my time for two hours, three hours, and then boom, repeat it again tomorrow. So gotcha. that's pretty much my idea today, bro. Well, 5.30 a.m. to 7.45 p.m., more or less. That's, that's kind of your day, you would say? Yeah, that's probably, that's, that's my day. But obviously I have that one hour before work where it's like, I'm doing, you know, my gym. So I don't, I guess we can call that part of my day, but yeah, I, I would say two hours after, work that's really like my time that i could do whatever i want like my cheat time i would say you know what i mean i feel you i feel you definitely and is that um uh, monday i'm sorry that's tuesday through sunday that's or monday, fridays but for now because monday. like this first year i wanted to just put my head down and just grind bro but eventually i'm gonna try to like go to maybe four days a week 
Got you. Got you. No, I, I love it, Lolo. I, I love it. Like I said, I, I never saw a lot of black engineers growing up. And one reason why I became a black engineer is because one day I saw some brothers walk into a, um, a middle school and say, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I was like, whoa, this guy, he looks like me. Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure that that's um, one of the dopest things about you as well. So let me just cut right to the chase, bro. Um, how do we get more young black men like you <laughs> and more black females to start going becoming medical doctors and dentists and going into the medical practice? How do how do, how do we get that to happen? Because I want to see more of it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I do think right now, like we're a living testament of what needs to be done because we're getting a lot more black doctors and and dentists. And and my goal, bro, when I got and I'm and I love that was part of your introduction as far as like increasing the, the the minorities and blacks in general into our profession, getting more people smart, because that's something I feel like I thrive to do with the way I live. And I feel like what I started doing was just making myself more visible, you know, as opposed to you see all these rappers and their athletes, they're posting on a daily basis, bro, right. maybe three times a day. Why are they doing that? Because they know that they they themselves are a business. The more that people see them. Even if they get one like or a million likes, somebody saw them. And right. then you repeatedly keep seeing it. Like you said, you never saw an engineer, but our kids are repeatedly seeing actors, rappers, uh, music videos, right. like all they're seeing on TikTok over and over and over and over again. So I was like, you know, how do you break that cycle? The only way you break that cycle is by having people like us, more educated people, get on these uh, uh, systems as well and keep posting because they're not gonna get, these people are not gonna stop doing it. So I started doing all these TikToks, all these posting. My goal was strictly to black little boys that look like me. I don't care who it is. They might be strolling to TikTok and they see some black guy. Oh, he looks like me and he's doing a silly dance, but he's a doctor. And then that started happening, bro. I started getting so many kids following me on TikTok, people following me on Instagram, parents telling me, oh, I showed my, my, my son your video and he thinks you're cool. And then I started getting a lot of black people coming into my office little kids and and that's really for me where i started doing it once i saw the impact i started personally going out to the communities myself like i would call up little uh, schools that that are predominantly black or or i have my manager help me and i would just go in there for even if it's like 20 30 minutes i would just donate my time knowing that it could make an impact so that's pretty much what i feel like needs to be done i do think the social media aspect we're getting a lot more black people on social media posting and stuff like that positively, which is great. I don't care if it's good or bad, as long as people are seeing it, I think it's amazing. But the next step is like black people like you and I actually purposely go into schools where little black kids are and just talking to them. Like if, if more of us did that, I think the impact would be exponential because some of these kids I walked in, they were like, damn, I've never seen a black dentist before. And you're a kid that's been your mom was born here, your grandparent was born here, you've never seen a black dentist, how is that possible? Dude. And yeah. I came from Haiti and I just came here and I'm the first dentist you've ever, like, and you're 14, 15 years old, your parents never thought to like, yo, let me put my kid around like this black guy that, that is I'm, successful. Honestly, Lolo, uh, I'm married to an immigrant woman. Um, she's Trinidadian Indian. Yeah. And uh, one advantage, this is my opinion, one advantage I find that a lot of immigrants have over black Americans is that if you grow up in a country like Jamaica or Haiti or Nigeria or Trinidad and Tobago, you're seeing black police officers, you're seeing black lawyers, you're seeing mm -hmm. black doctors, you're seeing black pro pro um, prime ministers, you're seeing black entrepreneurs. The first black prime minister I ever saw was Obama. Real talk. Yeah. Like in America, if you're not, if your parents aren't very intentional about placing mm -hmm. around black excellence, yeah, you can literally go from K through 12, and the only successful black people you see are rappers and uh, athletes, and it's sad yeah. to say. And that's yeah. why I say I like what you're saying because you are yeah. you're specifically calling up a high school in Opelika, Ohio, yeah. or um or uh, Miami Gardens and places like that. Are literally yeah, going in there, bro, because it's like, like it's like that's all that needs to be done. A lot of times people think, oh, let me buy a turkey for the community. I'm not calling nobody out or. Or let me have a part. It's like, bro, it doesn't take money to impact people, bro. Just show up. And then that's one of the things Like when you asked me about this podcast, like I was super busy. But that's one thing about me, bro. If I say I'm going to show up, I'm going to show up and I'm going to do it. Because it just takes that one little hour of your time or whatever it is of your time. And we can impact so many young kids. But not many of us are willing to just give our 30 minutes or our hour and actually intentionally go get seen bro like wear your uniform go to a little kid's school hey brush your teeth or uh, another person and use yourself as an engineer like 
you know, you go to a school, you you call up, you know, kids were predominant kids, and you you explain to them, hey, this is what I do for a living, blah 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 blah, and then you leave, and then it's like, damn, they're gonna be like, bro, I never knew what an engineer was, and you'd be so surprised how these kids don't know anything, bro. And I was that kid too, yep. right? And then and then it just amazes me that. Like we haven't been, we're not at that point where we're doing that as a community yet. But other people are doing it. Believe it or not, bro. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's funny. Um, one of my in my uh, corporate job, um, uh, my company said, Chris, we, we we would like you to go talk to this group of high school students. Now this school was legit in the bricks. I mean, I'm talking about like when I got there, I walked through metal detectors. I mean, kind of the same high school as me and you went to. Yeah. I, yeah. I walked through metal detectors. The prison across the street looked nicer than the high school I was at at, at that day. So I show up and I'm talking to these high school kids. I'm like, hey, what do I think I do for a living? I'm wearing like um my boots. I'm wearing like my um I'm wearing my vest and everything. And I'm wearing like basically my dickies and stuff. They're like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm a mechanical engineer. They're like, dressed like that. I was like, yeah. So I started explaining to them like the billion dollar systems that I work on and why I have to dress a certain kind of way, why PPE and stuff like that, because I'm working on extremely dangerous high voltage electric electrical circuits and stuff like that. And I'm explaining to them basically like how the building that they were in, how you be, um how how it's functioning. And they're like, whoa, who is this guy? Yeah. And yeah. it was pretty dope because like you said, um, just off of that one conversation along with those group of high school kids, I ended up having about 15 or 20 of them reach out to me about how they, what classes they should start taking, um, um, what classes they should start taking and things of that nature. And I actually had a couple of them reach out to me also about um, financial uh, freedom as well, financial emancipation, just because um, I talked to them a little bit about, okay, how are you going to invest your money and stuff like that. But like you were yeah. saying, a lot of times these kids, they just need to see people who look like them who grew up in the same crappy environments they grew up in. Yeah same types of uh, places and say, wow, if he did it, I can that's, do it. That's it. If you, if you can, if, if research will show you, if you see something, the chance of you becoming it is way more likely than never have seen it. Because the, then you start dreaming once you see it. Yep. Like people saw Michael Jordan and started dreaming about jumping in the air and like, you know what I mean? But that's a don't hold another topic for another day, but we just got to get out there, bro. That's it. I like it. I like it. I was interviewing this brother that works for NASA and he said the same thing. Uh, we just need to be more visible. Yeah, we work 50, 60 hours a week, but we got to still take that 10 to 15 hours a week to kind of go back into where we came from and basically show kids, yeah, I made it. You can make it. I did it. You can do it. All right. All right. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Uh, I'm assuming the dental field, bro, just like mechanical engineering is very, very, very white. <laughs> and there are not a lot of people who essentially look like me and you, Lolo. Uh, so how would you advise people of color to stay motivated when they go into spaces where we're not really seen? And to be honest, the people there may particularly not want us there. So how would you advise them to stay motivated? How do you stay motivated through uh, dental school, I would say? Um, first and foremost, you have to get allies. Like, And it doesn't need to be all black people or whatever and grouping up. You need to just find your people and, and then color shouldn't come into place. So. That's one thing about me, wherever, whatever environment that I'm in, I try to find a group of people that I know that I could depend on, that we're gonna be in it together. And this goes back to what we were saying earlier, even when we met. So whenever I get to a setting, even when I was in dental school, I saw the racism, I saw the segregation and all of that, but there was people of all colors that was cool, just like us and get along with everybody. I had my group, my, my small circle, one of my close friends was black. Um, I had a couple of other good black friends, but I also had a Spanish friend that was within us, a white guy, um, a couple of white girls. Like we were all cool and got along. So that made it a little easier. You know what I mean? But as far as like, you know, the, the um, to get to the niche of your question, which is how do we increase or um, our, our, you know, black people or, di or diversify the force is just simply by, you know, like, keep going forward and knowing what your why is it's like like i feel like my purpose in life is to be visible to black kids to educate black children and uplift children as a whole right so if i know that's what my goal and my purpose is like i'm gonna get dealt with a bunch of racism roadblocks and stuff like that like if i let those things deter me to what i really feel like what god is calling me to do like mm -hmm. I'm gonna fall short of my calling, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So all you could do is prepare for the road, it's gonna be tough, yeah, it's a lot of racism, but once you make it in that finish line, the amount of now kids that you can influence to then become who you were, it's just, you just multiply yourself in a sense by just being strong the same way our ancestors had to be strong during the hard time. If they chose to just, yo, I'm done with this, I'm gonna quit, we, we both wouldn't be here, okay. you know what I mean? So it's just, you have to understand life is unfair, bro. We've been dealt with an unfair hand, but we're strong enough to withstand the storm. So God would not have made us if we if he didn't know we could go through it. So you just got to find your people, number one, 
know that is going to be tough, but put your head down and know what your why is and what your purpose is. And the fact that you go through it, you're opening up the roads for so many more, but more black kids. So that's what the mindset was for me. Yep. Yep. I was going to my junior year in college and I was getting into a lot of just drama with my classmates and stuff like that. And uh, one of my, actually my brother was like, Chris, this is a convention I want you to go to. So um, this is an organization called the National Society of Black Engineers. And as his name implies, it's about um, it's about 40,000 black kids that are engineers, uh, mostly kids and some uh, some graduate professionals and things of that nature. But um, Sorry. no, you're good. You're good. I, I can see you. So basically, right. I go to this convention, I see 25,000 beautiful black faces, and I'm like, why in the world am I going to get out of engineering? I, I see all these people that look like me that made it. Why would I Why would I change my major now? So I basically uh, uh, rededicated myself to my craft, and I graduated close to the uh, top of my class. Um, I graduated from undergrad. And if I had quit at that point, I think about all the different, um, cause I've been in some of the trailblazers in my career, as far as being the first guy who looks like us, being some of the places that I've been in. If I had if I if I had let the drama and the stress and everything um cause me to quit, um, there are so many people over the last 20 years I would not been have been able to help. So like you yep. said, if you, if you quit, uh you're not doing what God put you on this plan to do, you missed your sure. calling. And I, I refuse to do that. And you're personally like you're personally are gonna influence the lives of so many other people. That's one thing I've realized about where we are at this stage of our lives, bro. How far we are in that walk. It's like, bro. There's so many, like, I have two of my cousins, for example, bro, little cousins that they're in dental school right now. And if they had never seen me become a dentist, that, would, that wouldn't even been a thought. They wasn't even thinking about that. And then that's a true living testament. Like, you could literally call them and talk to them. Two of my cousins, bro, they're dentists right now. They saw me go through dental school. They saw how I handled dental school. I went through residency. As I'm finished residency, was posting all this stuff. They was like, oh, they reached out to me. It was like, oh, you make it look so easy and fun. We want to become dentists. Nope. nope. And now one of them is about to graduate in a year. Her name is Sarah. And then the other one, I believe, is a second year. She's a year behind her. So she'll be graduating in two years. So yeah, man, just life is unfair, bro, for everybody. Even like sometimes I try to tell people like they look at, you know, a color and they automatically think racism, like all white people are racist or all black people hate white people. There's good in every race and every color, bro. Like everywhere. You just gotta find where the good is. And then after you do, you multiply it, meaning you spread your light. That's how you just gotta keep on moving on, bro. <laughs> ah, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. So true, so true. All right, let's keep it moving because I want to be respectful of your time. Um, what are the three, what are the three coolest things about being a successful entrepreneur and being a successful dentist? You said some of them, but what are three very cool things about being a successful entrepreneur, I would say? Uh, very cool. One, you get to influence a lot of people. Um, so you could choose to influence it in a good or a bad way. That's that's up to you. But I would advise to do it in a good way. Um, so that's pretty cool. Number two, I would say, you know, you get you get to have some freedom to enjoy life at times. <laughs> like because you're able to afford that. Right. Um, so let's just be real. So the influence, the, the the freedom to enjoy life, the finer things in life, I would say. And number three is the people you get to meet. You 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 get you kind of get to another level where you're able to put yourself in situations and to make resources that that you know that table would have never been open to you. That door would have never ever ever opened to you if you did not put down the groundwork. And it doesn't have to be just a dentist. It goes to any field, yeah, like I like agree. us, like. Like it, it's just you, once you get to a certain level of life, you're only going to meet people at that level. And then you just start meeting people at higher levels that you never knew existed. <laughs> so I would say those are the three coolest things, man. That is dope. That is dope. Uh, what are the three hardest things you would say to stay on that path? Three hardest things about being an entrepreneur. The three hardest thing is waking up every day and being <laughs> tired and still got to keep doing it. That's really hard. Like you can't really be like, I'm tired and I want to just, Doesn't there's, work. No, there's no like, oh, I want a one, one, one month break. Like I want to get away for a month. And you know what I mean? It's very rare if you could say, I want to get away for two weeks and not talk to nobody. Like, you know what I mean? So that's one thing that kind of sucks, but I'm sure once we get to a level, we'll be able to do that. But we're at that grind mode stage of it still, that is hard to do that. So that's one. Uh, another thing is you kind of have to, you're living a life of purpose. So you have to, and you're in people's eyes, you have to know how to act in a certain way. It's like, you know, like your mistakes are, are multiplied. 
by 10 or by 100. You know, if me as a pediatric dentist or you as an engineer get caught doing something, I'm sure the consequences would be extramental. Like it would be all over dentists, pediatric, black pediatric dentists, blah, 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 blah. Yep. You know what I mean? But your consequences are really multiplied or you know what I mean? So you have to be careful how you live your life, who you keep around you. And the last thing is, you know, there's a lot of people out here to bring you down, bro. Like, so it's like being able to have the right people. And I know I keep going back around to that, but being able to find that group of friends that you could trust and group of people you keep around you, they end up being your bodyguard. So when a leech tries to come in, everybody senses them together. Like, yo, Lolo, I saw you, st I saw you started hanging out with this person. I don't think you should hang out with them. Where for me, if I was by myself, didn't have a lot of friends, I'll be like, yeah, let me go and just hang out with that person. So the yeah. fact that you actively keep good people around you, you end up hanging around good people. So when those, you know, the snakes and the leeches are coming in, that's what I like to call them, they kind of form that barrier. So, so yeah, man, I would say those are the three worst things. You can't just get up and be like, yo, I want to take a break. You, you got to know who's around you, who you keep around you. And your mistakes are multiplied by 10, if not 100,000, bro. Nice, nice. It's funny yeah. you say that. I always tell people, uh, if you can't work 40 hours a week in corporate America, you cannot, you're not going to make it as an entrepreneur. I, I always tell people that. Um, if 40 hours a week, if you can't do that in corporate, there's no way you're going to work 80 to 100 hours a week for your own business for the time period that you have to do that. It's as simple as that. Because yeah. they automatically see that the, the boss is just chilling and they don't realize the hard work it took to get to where you are. And then even though it looks like we're chilling, we're actually working on the clock 24 hours a day. Yep. Because technically for me, if something were to go down at the office at one o'clock in the morning, or if a kid were to get hurt, one of my patients, I would be responsible because that's your office. You right. know what I mean? So I'm on the clock always. And same for you. If something's going down and a, a client needs something that's your one of your, you know, your new clients or best clients, and they hit you up at whatever time, you are the business and you know, yo, if I don't get up and make this happen right now, yep. I might lose out on a great opportunity in my life. To my, to my, to my listeners, yes, I have gotten 130 and 145 and 230 emails and phone calls from the person who directly reports to Bill Gates um, for projects that I've worked on. I've, I have directly gotten phone calls at 1230 midnight saying, this is the problem, what's going on? From yeah. some of the clients that I've worked for who I can't even talk about. So like, you're right. It's like um, when you get to a certain point, I would say in your career or in your business, yeah, there's certain things that only the boss can handle, only the um, heavy, um, only the king can handle, and they go directly to you because you are the one who's running the, who's running it. It's as simple as that. Facts. Yep. Uh, you mentioned, well, this, this is something, finding good friends, Lola. I like how you said that good friends are bodyguards. Iron does sharpen iron. How do you find good friends, man? Because in South Florida, that's a we're really any. Yeah. I mean, for me, bro, like like I've, I've said before, a lot of those things in my life lined up. I never forced myself to find friends, right? And I, I think a lot of times that's where we mess up. You just have to have a spirit of discernment. And that comes with believing in God, you're going to church. And I know a lot of times people might not want to go physically go to church or whatever, because there was a point in my life that I didn't want to physically go to church either because I was too tired or whatever reason that I made up. But as a kid, you know, my mom forced me to go to church. You know, the whole saying, you raise a kid uh, um, away and then they'll, they'll, they'll never fail away or something along that nature. I might be mis uh, misquoting yeah. it, but you know where I'm coming from. The way you should go, you'll never, and when he's old, you'll not depart from it. Yep, yep. Exactly. So, so I've always had that notion that, you know, if, if, if I go to church, God is gonna have my back. I'm gonna try to be a good person. And then what I normally, what I, what, what, the reason why I'm bringing that up is I relate that back to my life whatever setting that I'm in, bro, I I try to find the people that I know are like good hearted people, like people that believe in God. Like they don't have to tell me that, but you, there's just this thing that you feel like they might not be going to church every Sunday. They might be cursing, but you just, and in my environment, it's just, I discern. And then I always end up seeing one or two guys that I end up really just getting along with. We have the same interests. For you and I was basketball. So it was just like every part of my life. So I have a group of high school friends that I still hang out with till today that if I call at one o'clock in the morning, they'll show up. And those were like the two or three high school boys that we grew up playing sports together. You know what I mean? And I, it wasn't everybody, but those were the guys that were wholeheartedly. I know that they might've done stupid stuff with me, but 
they felt bad about it. They wanted to do better. Like they they had a spirit in them that was telling them, damn, bro, we messing up out here. We can't just be, you. it was just like that thing. Like we did stupid stuff, but it was that little thing. The, those guys that were like, they would do the stupid stuff and not regret it at all. And right. keep, I was just like, yeah, stay away from those people. But the people that, yeah, I might have done a stupid thing, but yeah, we got to get our stuff together. We got, we got, I want to be successful. So those were the guys that I kept up with high school. In college, same thing, bro. In dental school, same thing. So I got a sprinkle of good guy friends from each of those groups that I keep around me. Why? Because like I said, we've all had that same spirit, like that we love people. We want to be better. We know we messed up. We're going to mess up again. We might mess up together, but we're going to try to keep being better and we hold each other accountable. So that's kind of like how I've made friends. It was, it, none of it was intentional, bro. Like I never had to like force a friendship. It's just, it ended up that we end up being boys. Now I'm at your house. I'm sleeping over at your house and your, your wife knows me. It's just naturally just happened by just me being around certain people and discern that, yo, we got the same qualities in life. Black men, we're not perfect. But we trying to get better and we trying to achieve this goal. I don't even know what my goal is, but I know it's so big that we got to keep working. So that's how I've made friends, bro. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Let's uh, keep it moving, Lolo. Uh, one thing that really drew me to you, I mean, obviously, uh, black professional, your dentist and everything. We like hooping and everything. Both of us can ball. Uh, that kind of drew us to each other as well. But something else that really drew, uh, drew me to you, bro, was that you, it does seem like you, I honestly think that God has put you on this planet to motivate kids to want to do better and become medical professionals. Like I see the stuff you're doing on TikTok and I mean, that is just amazing, man. So I guess how often do you get back and go into the hood or go into um, environments and everything that look like us and talk to kids about trying to become a dentist? How, how, how often do you try to do that? Because that's definitely Girl, a hobby, a passion yeah, of yours. It's definitely a hobby of mine. It started off as like a marketing tool, not going to lie, but I ended up realizing the impact that i was having and then um and it was fun like it was re it really i would go in these schools i would leave and my heart would be happy bro yep. and um so now i would say like bro whenever i have free time where I, my schedules are not full like i know i got like two three hours if there's a school nearby i just try to go and i stop by and i bring some toothbrushes and i spend like 30 minutes with them there's times that i actually put it on my schedule ahead of time but most of the time is when my schedule is falling apart. I don't have much to do. Instead of me just going home and not doing anything, I just call, like try to find a school. I have my assistants call or I call myself. And I'm like, hey, can I come to the school and talk to them about brushing their teeth? And I would say, I would say throughout the year, since it, the time varies throughout the year, a good five to seven time, I would say. But there could be a month that I do it twice or a month period that I don't do it at all. You know what I mean? So yeah. I would say between five to seven times throughout the year. Yes. And I'll, I'll try it somewhere. Keep doing that, Lolo. Keep doing that. Like you said, um, whenever I go into uh, really any school, it doesn't have to be a necessarily inner city. When I talk to kids about what I do for a living and how engineering has just truly blessed me and sent me all over the world, I don't care how tired I am from working in my business or how tired I am from working in corporate America. I walk out of there energized. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's crazy. When you help other people, how much it helps you. Yeah. It's funny because I just I'm just reading this book. Um, I forget the name of it. Um, it's pretty much a self betterment book, and then they did a research saying that people that care mostly about themselves, and then they separated them into three groups. They had a group mainly do stuff for them, make themselves happy. A group that do 50-50, and a group that does stuff to help others. The group that did stuff to help others, they were significantly happier than the group that had all the stuff just to do for themselves. So now, with that being said, am I not saying don't treat yourself? Treat yourself. But what we're really called for is finding what you're naturally good at and teach people it, bro. That, right. That's really what it is, is teach people. We're I called a disciple, you know what I'm saying? That's really all it is. And teaching my craft is that I happen to be good with kids. So why don't I just teach kids what I do? You know what I'm saying? It's that easy, bro. And then that's how you just give back to the community. People make it way bigger than what it is, bro. We okay. were all talented in a different way, but it's kind of like you find your purpose and then you gift it away, bro. That's that's really the essence of life. I agree. You I know? agree. Yeah. That is that that is so true. 
over throughout the course of this podcast, Lolo, you mentioned uh, your faith in Jesus. You mentioned your faith as a Christian. You mentioned just kind of you, you mentioned different spiritual things. Like you said, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Um, just from the way you're talking, I can yeah. tell that you uh, obviously have a belief in a higher power. Full disclosure, this is a financial channel. It's not a religious channel. But uh, what role, Lolo, if any, did religion have in your success, both professional, financial, as well as personal, I would say? Um, I would say it has an effect in all of those areas, bro. Because we can talk about on a personal level, I feel like having a relationship with Jesus Christ kind of helps keeps me accountable to to keep be, being better. I know I might not be perfect. He doesn't call us to be perfect. But I, it, it helps me mentally thrive to be better because I feel like somebody is just there watching me and me, like, you know what I mean? Like I could feel his presence. Like, you know, we don't have to get into all of that. So that's on a personal level. On a, on a spiritual level, I feel like I'm able to connect with something higher being knowing that we're here on this earth for a reason. And we're not just here just to just condemn each other and bully each other and, and raise hell upon each other. We're here for a higher purpose of doing good for the earth. On a personal and slash work level, a professional level, I feel like personally, it, it has increased my business. Like, just to be real with you, like, like just being open about my faith in God, I feel like it's blessed me a lot. Like, my business has grown exponentially within within six to eight months, just because that I feel like I'm able to go into my church. I serve with the kids. I've been serving with the kids way before I had I had um um, um an office. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I always knew my gift was like I said with kids. So I used to be part of the kids ministry in church. I would help them out to help them with the Sunday school lessons. I've always done that for the most for the most part of my life. I've always helped out with the kids ministries. And now that I have my own office, the our church is growing like crazy, becoming this huge church. Our church started as a small thing. Where do you think all the moms want to take their kids? <laughs> so true. They're hey, going to trust like the guy that's been in the church that's trying to do it as opposed to another guy that they don't really know. Yep. Yep. So that's why I'm saying it. it's helped me in all of those levels. So that's why I'm not really afraid to proclaim our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because I, I know it without him. Like, bro, I don't know where my life would be, bro. I'll just be real with you. You know, it's funny, Lolo. Uh, the first mentor I could honestly I ever had in my career was a Haitian immigrant. And his family fled Haiti. I think when uh, Rico was probably like Papa Doc basically was showing up and was killing like all the uh, professionals. So his father in the middle of the night ended up taking them to uh, New York and everything. And Rico says he actually remembers the police on their heels when they were leaving. Um, but anyway, Rico uh, always told me, Chris, when you go come, you become an entrepreneur. The way you basically uh, become a successful entrepreneur, how is it? I was like, I don't know, be very good at what you do. He said, eh, that's a little important. I was like, okay, uh, I don't have the credentials. Yeah, that's kind of important. He said, if you want to be a successful entrepreneur. Get very good at what you do, but figure out a way to help people for free. And if you do that, you will always have clients. And yeah. it's funny you say that because now uh, you're Haitian as well. Um, I'm thinking about what Rico told me 25 years, 20 years ago. And it kind of is full circle. Kind of. Raj, if you want to help people, you want to be successful, help people. Do it for free yeah. and you'll be amazed at what, what, what happens down the road. Yeah, that's that's facts, bro. Because like, bro, I like I serve kids, bro. That's pretty much what my purpose is. And then because I've done that, it's just gotten me so many patients, bro. Like, and the mom said another mom and the mom, oh, that's the guy that served da, 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 da. And then it's just like, it's just like, oh, the crops is just multiplying, bro. And so that's really what's happening in my life right now. But yeah, you're right, man. Just do free work. That free work is pretty much marketing. And you're doing it for that, for God in a sense. So I don't know if you're if you're involved in your church, if, or, or, if, you, or if, um, if you do or not, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure you probably do from yeah, yeah. speaking. But yeah, uh, easiest way to do it, man, is just getting involved in some ministry in your church and doing something for free. And then they see how good you are with doing it. Everybody's going to tell you to go there. So it's like now you got a full load of patience and not that saying these are the people you're going after it for real, but just do it out of your heart, knowing that this is what I'm good at. Why don't I help my church by doing it for free for them? Definitely. Nah, okay. yeah, to, to all my listeners, uh, definitely keep that in mind. Okay, find a way to help people, and you will literally always uh, have clients. You'll always have you'll always, always have a career. Simple as that. You always have a, a functioning business. So yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, keep it moving because I want to be respectful of your time, Lola. A few more questions I would like to ask you. Uh, once again, this is a financial channel. What are three pieces, Lolo, of financial advice you would give my listeners that have worked well for you as a medical professional? 
three pieces of uh, financial advice in the medical profession. This period, this period, medical, it can period. be medical professional. Uh, I think you're, try to get rid of your loans sooner than later. Stop trying to wait. I know a lot of people fault. I remember when I was in school, I always said, oh, I'm gonna try to get rid of my student loans ASAP. People like, oh no, I'm just gonna make the minimum payment and live with it forever. I'm like, do as you please, but I feel like you should try to get rid of your, your debt as soon as possible. Um, number two, live below your means for as long as you can, because the older you get, the harder it is to live below your means. So if you're making $50,000 right now, try to live a little below it. Or if you can't, then don't. The, the next raise you get when you start making $75,000 a year, well, live off 50,000 because you was already living off 50,000. So you just don't do no improvements for like a couple of years. And then you get your next raise, then yeah, you might want to slowly increase your, your, your living lifestyle, but just don't try to drastically go up to the fifth level when you're on level one. And that's a lot of thing I see people do. Like, for example, me, you know, I like cars. I like all the nicer things in life. But yeah, I went, I slowly increased my cars because I like cars. It makes me happy. But I didn't go graduate school. Boom. Let me get the biggest, baddest Mercedes Benz. And that's crazy increase of lifespan. Let me get the Lamborghini. You know, I slightly went up. I had a Honda and got a little Mustang and then got a little, you know, a, a nice Audi. But it's nothing like a hundred thousand dollar car 80 of six there's nothing like that it's like slow improvements as right. opposed to just yo i got the money now let me boom get everything that i want so live below your means pay off your debt and try to stay away from credit cards as much as possible because unless you're really really good with money and know how to use their perks by all means there's a lot of people i know that makes a lot of money off using credit card perks but if you're a busy person and you have a lot going on with your life don't just sit there and get a bunch of credit cards because it's going to end up buying you because these people, they, they know how to get you in a sense. Oh, so yeah. those are the three things I would say. I, I, I love it, man. Get a financial I advisor too. Get a financial advisor. Yeah, definitely, definitely. If I were to answer this question, I would say uh, three pieces of financial advice. I would say first and foremost, uh, try, try to max out as many of the three pillars as possible. What I mean by that is the three pillars are the 401k, the Roth IRA, and the HSA. If 401k, at the time of this recording, 2024, you can put $23,000 into it. If you can max that thing out, max it out. The Roth IRA, at the time of this recording, you can put $7,000 into it. If you can, max it out. Lolo, you are uh, a self-employed professional, so you have a, a SEP IRA. I think it's, I think in 2024, you can put $68,000 into it. And and uh, if you and also try to max out the HSA, the health savings account, um, if you're a single guy, it's $4,150. So max out what I call the three pillars. The second thing I'll say is this. Get financially literate, everybody. Um, I have an MBA. I spent $120,000 for that degree, and I got screwed over to, for that kind of student loan debt. I have a podcast about that. I won't get into that in this particular uh, podcast. But when I was getting my MBA in uh, 2012, None of this stuff existed. There were the podcasts that were around, the YouTube channels that were around talking about finance, they were trash. Nowadays, you can literally go online and um, with a, a, a podcast like Financial Patient, I can literally, I'm literally walking you through many of the things I learned in grad school for free. And um, as a result, everybody get financially literate because it's so easy and it's so ubiquitous to find, okay, what is a Roth IRA? What is an HSA? How, how do I do a, um, a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA conversion? What, what, are, the, what are the conversion rates as far as um, my APYs and things of that nature? There's so many different things you can do to learn this stuff and it's easy. It's not challenging. So get financially literate. Sure. Podcasts and all that kind of stuff. Books everything that um um yeah I, I have a Roth IRA and I had I had it 401k too because remember I worked at the hospital but right. now when I'm transitioning to the to the my own private office world so that's something that I do want to get more uh, educated about and I'll probably reach out to you because before I had my 401k because they were matching me so I matched the contribution and I had my Roth IRA um, and that was pretty much what I've had. And obviously uh, my um, uh, life insurance and stuff like that. But now I do want to transition my 401k possibly to a health savings account, I think might be my best bet. But right. I'm not that educated. And then right now, I'd definitely love to pick your brain about that to see what my best options are. Cause I don't know where to move that money, if that makes sense or how to move uh, that money. I, I got you. I, I can walk you through all that yeah. stuff. It's a it's a relatively uh, simple process. I do a lot of one on ones. Actually, I just did a one on one with a gentleman uh, the other day about that. And there's a um, um, there's a young, uh, uh, slightly older woman I'm working with. She just left her company, so she's like, "How should I transition? What should I do with my 401k in my old company? What should I do with in my new company? I have a Roth IRA in this in this particular account through Fidelity." Chris, how should I move forward? So she's booking a one-on-one -on -one session with me. I, I can walk. I walk her through it very simply. I can do same thing with you, but I can walk you through it as well. Bro. Yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. 
And the last bit of financial advice I'll give everybody that's listening is this, get a good education, people. One thing I love about immigrants, and this is kind of something that drew me to them, is that you guys have a thirst and a love for education that Americans, to some extent, take for granted. It's just, I don't care whether it's a Black American, White American, um, Asian American, or whatever. Generally speaking, from what I find, immigrants, I think because you guys come from countries where education is not free, um, you guys take a lot more advantage of the educational dream when you come to America. If you don't believe me, look at the um, look at the master's degree rates for like Nigerian Americans and Chinese Americans that come here that were born in other countries, and Caribbean Americans that come here, and then compare their 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 graduate degree rates to Americans. So get a good education, everybody. And if you don't want to go the white collar route, I mean, learn a trade. I mean, I, I don't crap on my blue collar electricians, my elevator operators, or my sheet metal uh, workers. If uh, school, quote unquote, is not what you want to do, a good education, everybody, is to learn a trade because those people make one hundred. They make over six figures as well. So yeah, those, yeah, that's, that's facts. I'm talking to one of my uh, really, really good friends, and his this guy started a car wash business. Got educated about it. This guy's making well over three hundred k a year right now. He, he started it all by himself with a little pickup truck with his stuff. He would be washing like 20 cars a day. He would go to like hospitals and go to the doctor's office and get the keys of all the doctors because they're parked in the same garage, wash all their cars for like, you know, they think it was like 20, 30 bucks. And then obviously everybody would tip them because it's like, oh, this is so cheap. So if you can do the math, 20 cars, about 40 to 50 bucks a car, you're getting a day. And then this is like back then when it was like non-taxable money, cash you're getting and you don't got to worry about student loans. So when we talk about education, everybody, like I saw, I said, like there's good people everywhere, bro. It's all about having that work ethic, like you said, and that and that thirst for education. And it could be getting yourself educated in anything and be willing to grind for it, bro. Yep, definitely, definitely, Lolo. I mean, I I, I could I can't I cannot stress that uh, anymore. People get a good education, whether it's white collar, like me and Lolo did, whether it's blue collar. Um, or whether it's joining the Marines and coming a cop or things of that nature, people, yeah. there, there, America has its issues. Let's just cut right to the chase. I mean, I'm not going to say that America does not have issues with racism, sexism, and a lot of other isms. But at the end of the day, in this country, you literally can become anything that you want. You can start a business. You can do anything that you want in, in America. It truly is that kind of country. And I always say this is the greatest country in the world as far as building generational wealth. So get a good education, people, period, period. Um, two more questions for you, Lolo, because I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, readers or leaders, fam, uh, what are three books you would advise my listeners to read? Oof, that's a good one. Um, I can't think of a lot of the books that I've just read off the top of my head, but I have a picture with all of their names. If I could have a few seconds to go look for that. No worries, no worries. No worries. I but will... I, one, of, one of the books was this... It's, Oof, bro. I'm like, I'm not a good, I, I, if, if you know anything about me, bro, I'm terrible with names of like movies, names of books and stuff like that. But I personally try to read usually like two to three books a year. Um, and I can't even recall the last book name that I just finished reading on the plane that I was just on, bro. And I was reading. <laughs> I promise you are everything, bro. But it was a self-testament book, but, um, so I don't know. I would need to go look for that list for you. Because it's, I do have a couple of books. And the books that I usually try to read are like self-betterment books. Like uh, something that I'll be able to kind of like um, um, apply to my life to get better. Um, I do read the Bible as well too. So I do recommend reading that book. <laughs> um, but there's there's a couple of books that I just can't get off the top of my head. If you give me a few seconds, I can go literally like grab some of them. And I would get get back to you right now. So no, I'll, 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 I'll uh, answer the question first then while you are uh, going through it. Uh, the first book I would advise my, uh, my listeners to read is first and foremost, uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Uh, that's a book about mental strength. He was a Navy, he, he was a, a U.S. Navy SEAL. Uh, the guy was a U.S. Army Ranger. Um, the dude has literally had one of the hardest and most challenging childhoods I've ever read in my life. And if you want to make excuses about why your life sucks, read David Goggins' book and you won't make any excuses anymore. Uh, the next uh, book I would advise everybody to read is Black Faces in High Places. It's a really good book in regards to teaching minorities is um, how to basically as essentially ascend the corporate ladder, become CFOs, CEOs, and ultimately go off and uh, start their own business. And uh, the last book I would advise everybody to read because uh, uh, Lolo is an entrepreneur. Um, I'm an entrepreneur and uh, basically both of us have worked in corporate America is Who Moved My Cheese? 
And I like the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Because it kind of tells you that in order for you to be successful in life, whether it's with your relationships, whether it's with your finances, whether it's with all your businesses, you have to get used to essentially, um, get you have to get used to essentially uh, change. You have to get used to saying, okay, what's right. different? What What's gonna change? What's new? And how do I basically move on to the next level? So those are, th those are the three books I'd recommend. Black Faces in High Places, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, and Who Moved My Cheese. I, I read that David Goggins book. That boy is crazy. He, you look like him now that I think about it. Bro, you know, man, I've had, I've actually had people stop me before and ask me, "Am I?" Yeah. Is, oh, I'm like, uh, nah, I'm not, bro. I literally had people stop me and ask me that question. That boy is <laughs> the hardest working guy I've ever seen. But he's a little, he's yeah. a, he got to be a little crazy to, to go through what he, you know. Yeah, I, I don't think the same. And and I do think all of us men that are like leaders that want to become entrepreneurs, like we are all got that little crazy in us that. Honest anything we want to do you know what i'm saying so that's why i can't really judge him because i feel like i got that little bit of it in me yeah but he's extreme dude <laughs> i think you kind of have to be a little off to knowing to willingly volunteer to join the military and get shot at and killed and they kill people right. but and i also think you have to be a little off to kind of say i want to basically leave the comforts of corporate america and go start my own business where that may or may not succeed right. I, I do think that entrepreneurs and um navy seals as well as uh a lot of uh, high, uh, high adrenaline, high achieving people. You have to be a little off. We're not, we're alphas. We're not, we're, we're, we're not the kind of guys that just sit back and just let life happen to us. We dominate it and go and move forward. All right. All right. So yeah. So to answer your question about the books, so this is the book I'm currently reading. So if y'all think I was not, I was lying. This is where my bookmarker is. I'm like halfway through it. This is like my first book of the year. It's uh, it's called Built the Life You Want. So this book honestly is really an eye opener for me because it's just all about how to control what you can control, how to manage your emotions, how to be happier in life, like how to take every mo moment for what it is. Cause I feel like I've always had that issue with myself. Like, and then I think we all do like people that are trying to be very successful. We're our biggest critics, right? Like we're, we, we gonna be like, it doesn't matter what people tell us in the world, they're not gonna break us down. But we ourselves sometimes are in our own head, killing ourselves being hard on ourselves, not being able to let go of situation, especially for me as a as a as a uh, medical doctor, I'm working with kids, something that I might done during the workday didn't go the way I want kid got uh, started crying or whatever it is what I did. And then now I'm at home, like, just like killing myself. So with this is all it's a very strong self empowerment book. It helps you be happier it helps you manage your life better. Highly, highly recommend this for anyone like Anyone in, that are that's just a black man in general, or any men in general that's just trying to take life for what it is and be happier with what you have, and just go through the grind of life. That's pretty much what, what this is about. The book that I read before, I told you, I'm very about self, um, um, self, uh, um, self building and and self empowerment books was the the celebration of discipline. So this is by Richard Foster. So this book is really about you know what it says. It's just how to be more disciplined. And pretty much the more disciplined you are in life, the more free you are. And that's how that book tells us, right? Um, it's kind of like if you're so used to just partying every day and doing a bunch of stuff every day, you think you're really free. But in reality, you're a slave to whatever those activities are because those activities could change. You might not have a person to hang out with. And then now, or you might have to rely on alcohol or whatever it is. And, you know, not to shame anyone. I know there's real, um, 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 you know, substance abuse and mental illnesses out there. However... Um, relying on stuff to make you happy and not being disciplined to your craft it's a lot of time people think oh I could do everything I want that's real freedom but being disciplined to your routines to your schedules it just brings so many more options later for you to then be free and to be happy so that's what this one is about and in the book I read before is called marriages matters and the reason why I read that because obviously I'm a single guy um, what up ladies out there <laughs> um, and I just wanted I grew up without a father bro I, I don't know how to be a man sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like certain situations of how a man should act in a, in a, in a relationship, I'd never seen it before. Like, yeah. you know, I've never seen an example of it before. So I really wanted to read a book to kind of just give me the ground rules of how a marriage should be, what a wife should be like, what a husband should be like, how we should handle our emotions with our wives and stuff like that. So that was a really, really cool book that I read. Um, you know, I guess, I guess one of the things about us and people like us, it's like you get to a certain stage of your life, bro. You realize that 
even if I grew up without a dad or somebody grew up without this and that, it's our job to educate ourselves, going back to the education, to better ourselves. So that's when I took responsibility to start reading these types of books to better myself because I didn't grow up without a father. I don't know a lot about being a man and I'm trying the best as I could to be the man that I think I should, you know what I mean? Without an example. Going back to never seeing a pediatric dentist and to become a pediatric dentist or never seeing an engineer. So, so yeah, man, so that's the type of book I'll be on, bro. <laughs> Shoot, I'm gonna I'm 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 try to bring you back into the podcast, Lolo, because I mean, yeah. you could have an entire podcast <laughs> dads and relationships. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm bring you back. I actually just dropped a podcast with a, uh, a, a panel discussion about like just dating and uh, church and um, like just girls and women and um, father figures and stuff like that. And I'm gonna bring you back uh, right now. Uh, this, one, this one right here is getting a little long winded, but um, I'm gonna bring you back for a, a, a future podcast because I would, would probably be a statistic if it was not for my black father. And the fact you did not have a father in your life, um, and you still became a medical professional, you're a dentist, dude. That's you beat you you literally beat every statistic imaginable, yeah. particularly in South Florida. So that's 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 insanely impressive, man. It really is. God is good. God is good all the time, bro. All the time. My last question for you, fam, is this one. Um your son, uh, your younger brother, you are an entrepreneur, you are a great dentist, and you are a believer in Christ. And, um, and as well as you are a phenomenal example to black boys, black girls, and to people generally all over the country, regardless of the color of their skin. Uh, when God calls you home, Lolo, and your time on earth has passed, what do you want your legacy to be? I want my legacy to be like God said, good job, servant. You raised up and influenced a lot of kids to just realize that, you know, there's better things to do in life as opposed to be street and and being an athlete and you could be a cool dentist and still you know listen to your rap music and play sports and be an athlete and be serving life in a good positive way so that's what i feel like god i would love for him to say to me that you could be cool but you could still serve people in the medical profession and influence the youth by being swag at the same time got you got you I love it. I love it. I, I agree, man. As black men, we can be athletes, we can be musicians, we and we can be professionals, and we can be engineers and doctors. We can do all of it. Yeah. We, and, and me and you literally are doing all of it. That's what I love the most. Yeah. All right. For all my females, my ladies that are listening, this brother, he's tall. He's about six four. He plays ball. He's not fat. He's a he's a uh, dentist. He's a, and he says he's single. So Lolo, how 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 would my female listeners uh, get in touch? With you? I got about a thousand of them. So I, how would they get in touch with you? The best way to get in touch would be Instagram, right? <laughs> Just uh, uh, at dr. That's dr for doctor underscore p lolo p as in Patrick and then l o l o. <laughs> Got you. So at under at doctor underscore p l o l o l o. Got you. Yeah, but it's at dr, not like not the whole doctor word. Got you. So at dr underscore p l o l o. Got you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Lola. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. This channel, everybody, is all about making money. It's all about saving money. It's all about building generational wealth. And it's all about financially emancipating yourself from generational poverty. You can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me, everybody. The link is going to be below. Uh, I'm not giving you financial advice. Please make your own individual uh, choices based off the choices that you make and the resources you do for yourself. In addition, everybody, you can please follow me on my website at www.therealfinancipation.com. You can check me on Instagram, the real underscore financipation. My Spotify, like it says in that sign back there, is Financipation. My TikTok is Financipation. My Facebook page is Financipation. Additionally, please check out my blog, uh, Financipation as well. For $4.99 a month, I go into a lot more detail in regards to um, in, uh, investing in regard to a real estate investment trust, uh, wills, trust, and things of that nature. And uh, check out some of my digital products below as well. And once again, Lola, I'm definitely going to bring you back, man. There's a lot of things we can talk about as far as father figures, uh, dating in Miami, uh, just being um, a, a, a black professional, mind, body, and soul as far as uh, taking care of your body, being a professional, and being a good example to our community so i definitely want to bring you back bro for real for real facts i'm definitely down man let me know i got you <laughs> so for sure all right everybody please like please comment please share please subscribe please hit that um notification bell so you know when i drop new content um and once again thanks for uh thanks lola for coming on this was a good one bro appreciate it peace peace all right bro